Fab Camp to do more or uh, resident aerospace physiology? Morning, everyone. Uh, we talk about uh, fitness and some of the components associated with that. Uh, the Center for Disease Control has basically dedicated the month of May for health and nutrition. So uh, obviously fits in with that, but also with the 25% uh, of the things uh, that are causing these off-duty mishaps are related to sports recreation, right? So not just saying, you know, fitness, you're going to the gym, but also kind of taking this concept to times when you're playing intramural sports, uh, playing golf whenever you're just out there at the uh, golf course or even just the you know, golf range, things like that. So really applying this concept to kind of other aspects of your life as well, uh, other than just running on the track or things like that. So. Hopefully that's not you taking, finding the closest parking spot, taking the escalator up uh, to go to the gym, but yeah, taking the stairs and not falling, right? So from the uh, data that is available on the uh, CDC website, they basically took a look at the entire country and you can kind of see some of the, the numbers there for, and this is uh, percentages of people who are basically physically inactive. So obviously the, uh, the lighter shade there uh, means that those people are more active. So you kind of see based on regions that usually folks out towards the West Coast uh, are more active, more outdoor type of things. But uh, as we zoom in right here to where we're at at Eglin, it's basically the same shade, right? So uh, that just may be that uh, the fact that high population of military personnel, so therefore, you know, it's naturally going to be more active people. Uh, but also there may be more things to do outside, right? So kind of thinking some of those uh, those aspects and clearly it's going to be you know, better weather and uh, a lot of other things to do. So we're all very familiar with the benefits of the exercise and the amount of weight uh, and the things that you're definitely going to notice really just in, in a short matter of time uh, from the time that you maybe start exercising or having uh, maybe taken a period of time off and then going back to exercising. You're really going to see some of those things uh, really improve pretty rapidly. But uh, really, the thing that you know I am a little bit more concerned about is trying to build space uh, or a gap between you and some of the dangers associated with not working out. Right. So you kind of see the list over here uh, on your right hand side. Uh, obviously, reducing the risk of dying. That's uh, that's always a good thing, right? Um, some of the other health risks associated with that. Uh, but, you know, again, kind of relating back to some of the other portions of the, uh, of the briefings that we've already heard, risk of falling, uh, risk of unnecessary injuries uh, because of maybe wrist injuries, uh, ankle injuries, knee injuries, shoulder injuries, where some of those uh, just areas that are commonly used over and over again during our work day uh, through repetition are now going to be also engaged in sports uh, and recreation things that are going to be causing uh, unnecessary injuries. So having a, a true uh, uh, full spectrum approach to uh, your workout program would really incorporate all uh, of the first four here, and that's really going to you know, influence that body composition, right? So that's the percentage of fat versus fat-free type of tissue that we have in our body. So uh, a lot of people sometimes get pigeonholed into one thing, uh, just simply strength, uh, and that's it, just lifting weights and kind of uh, disregard anything in terms of uh, endurance or uh, the overall cardiovascular component, uh, and as well as flexibility and stretching. A lot of times those things are kind of second uh, type of priorities whenever people are going to the gym. They want to go in there, get their workout done, and basically move as quickly as possible. So really kind of taking uh, a second look at your program, your goals, uh, maybe need to reevaluate some of this stuff, uh, and really kind of incorporate everything uh, because really that Again, body composition uh, is, you know, what, well, particularly the services, every services PT test has a component, a component in there that is related to uh, voice circumference, body composition, all those things. So making sure that uh, kind of assessing, obviously the hawk uh, will be able to give you a, a good idea of kind of where you fall, uh, which category based on gender. Uh, so just some good things to kind of consider and think about to kind of get uh, each back to possibly uh, where your goals are uh, for maybe the summer months as you're trying to get a little more fit. So as I said earlier, flexibility is one of those key components of uh, a workout program and what it should entail. So uh, when 
you know, and this really relates to uh, more than just, again, going to the gym, like I said earlier. Sports and recreation, intramural sports, uh, soccer, uh, intramural soccer is supposed to be starting up soon. Basketball will be just ended. Uh, so we got a lot of things that are pretty high risk, uh, high probability for some of those sports related injuries. So making sure that you are uh, stretching prior to as well as after. Uh, and the reasons why for that is because we want to increase the circulation and warm up those muscles that we are about to engage in, uh, in the exercise that we're about to do. And that way, we are going to be physically prepared, yes, but it also sends a, uh, a neurological signal to those muscles, basically preparing them to uh, be ready for what's coming. Clearly reduce risk of injuries, as we've said. Uh, increasing flexibility is going to be increasing that range of motion. Uh, making sure that, uh, again, those constant movements, whether it's with uh, you know, ankles stopping, pivoting, moving one direction or the other, uh, increasing that risk of spraining the ankle if you're clearly preparing that, uh, that area of your body for the uh, activity that's ensuing, then it's going to be a lot better for you. Also, lower back injuries are, are typically pretty common. Wrist injuries are another one. Uh, you know, if you're falling, you try to catch yourself from falling, spraining a wrist, potentially breaking uh, a wrist. So, you know, just even if you're sitting at your desk, you can uh, roll your wrist, kind of get them out of that just standard position on the keyboard or your mouse that, uh, that it's used to work. Or if you're turning wrenches all day, then clearly that repetition can uh, cause those to get a little tight. So how we're going to do this is, uh, first of all, we want to increase the heart rate to really just get the circulation going, as I said earlier. Dynamic stretches prior to, so that involves motion, right? So not just standing there, arms across your chest, uh, holding your, your foot in, uh, up, stretching out that quadricep, uh, but moving to, again, increase the, the range of motion and flexibility with those muscles. And then afterwards, doing static stretches, uh, which are more of the pull that muscle uh, in a elongated position to try to stretch it out. So real quick, uh, look at a, uh, Pseudo good example of stretches. So, 
kind of breaking down three categories here, good, bad, and the ugly. Uh, the good is typically just like your vitamins. Things to be aware of that is uh, vitamins A, D, E, and K are fat soluble. So that means that uh, if you take too much of them, uh, it can become toxic uh, versus all the rest of them are water soluble. So whatever your body doesn't absorb, it's going to pass automatically. Uh, the bad would be things uh, particularly associated with those supplement industry uh, type of uh, items that have been previously banned. I mean, I mean everybody's familiar with ephedra, right? Uh, a few years back, uh, I guess 10 years or so now, probably it was banned because folks were having heart attacks while they were working out. Uh, and supplement industry got this amazing idea that they can just change the molecular component very slightly, change the name on it. And they uh, basically slap a new label in the front of it and call it something different, and it's the exact same product. But now it's under a different name, so it's perfectly legal to sell, right? So it's uh, things like bitter orange. Uh, if you take supplements, you see that in there, that's basically a pepper. So kind of being careful with things like that. Uh, and again, if you uh, get tags, take a, a urinalysis test, and those things should show up. And I guarantee you that list is a lot longer than most people think it is in terms of what they're looking for uh, for supplements. And then the, uh, the last component here real quick is uh, the ugly category, right? So no uh, regulations, that means there is a high probability for variability. So even though you may be getting the same product, uh, same location over and over again, that does not necessarily mean it has got the exact same uh, things in there. So being aware of uh, how that can change and again, Getting plenty of protein in your diet, plenty of fruits and vegetables, you should eliminate any need for supplements uh, to really get the job done to make sure that you are in an uh, adequate health status uh, during entire summer months, reducing risk uh, through the uh, stretches that we talked about, uh, reassessing your goals, and making sure that every component that we listed earlier is a, uh, is a part of that to meet those goals. Getting in shape gradually is, a, uh, is another good Things. So if you're just being off profile, not expecting yourself to be the same uh, shape that you were in uh, two months ago uh, prior to a surgery or something like that. So uh, taking time to get back in the swing of things. And if you have any additional questions, uh, this is my extension. Uh, so thanks for your time. And that's all I have.